the Viking, the Norseman, aren't they great? Valhalla! Okay, they were raping, pillaging and murdering, but they live life really big. Roar! Apart from being good at sailing and drinking from the skull of their enemies, these horn-hatted warriors can teach us a lot about the climate. If only I have the time machine. I'm just kidding, I do have one. Let's go! Whoa! I come back. It's 985 AD. Look at those Vikings over there. They don't seem to be pillaging, raping, and murdering. Maybe they're resting or working from home. It looks like they're farming. But hang on, according to my calculation, I'm not in Sweden. I'm in Greenland. Even in the warm 21st century, Greenland is almost entirely covered by ice and glaciers. Everyone knows that. You can look up on Google Images. So Huili, how come the Vikings are here growing barley in 985 AD? Let's investigate from a distance. Ah, that's more like it. Viking longboat. Those guys love to get around. Obviously, they went south to get some vitamin D. They got right down to the shore of Caspian Sea. They found women. Monastery, sunshine, the perfect ingredient for Dark Ages staycation. But why northwest to Greenland? The story starts with my pal Eric the Red. Eric the Red is known for having A, red hair, and B, the big bad temper. Unfortunately, his wife became a Christian and unwilling to sleep with him because he's a pagan. Oh, Rusty here got kicked out of his native Norway for killing his neighbor. Now he heads north to find a pleasant place to settle in, which he called Greenland. Now there is a silly theory Eric called it Greenland as a regional development marketing ploy to persuade his fellow Vikings to come over to settle in Greenland like an advert for Palm Spring retirement home. But this is nonsense. Eric hated having neighbors. Viking warriors who have big axes and bad tempers don't like being corn. Eric called it Greenland because it was green like this. Or at least much greener than it is today. You want to see a willy graph? Of course you do. Here's a record of the Greenland ice sheets over the past 10,000 years. Here's Earth in the 21st century. Very, very icy. Back in Eric's day, there was so much less ice in Greenland. And before that, even less. Lucky old Eric. And wasn't just warmer up in the Arctic. Here's Antarctic temperature for the past two and a half thousand years. Here's us. Here's Eric. Here it is even warmer than before Eric's time. He would have loved it down here. When Eric arrived in Greenland with a small Viking group, they were able to start a thriving farming community. Whoa! Fast forward to 1000 AD. Make Liv Ericsson, as the name implies, the son of Eric. He gets blown off course between Norway and Greenland and ends up in America. He has gone and done a Columbus, the place he found it's called Lanso Meadow in Newfoundland. In the 21st century, it's cold. The average temperature in the winter is around minus 6 degrees Celsius. But guess what the Viking calls it? Vinland, as in vine and wine. In case you are not a wine aficionado, Canada is not well known in the 21st century for wine. In fact, to make decent wine, you need temperature to reach 25 to 32 degrees Celsius. In the modern era, the highest temperature here at the height of summer don't get much above 16 degrees. That's why there are 21 craft breweries and zero vineyard today. The Viking hung around drinking wine in their Canadian paradise on and off for 20 years. But then they got kicked out by the natives. Having found in America, later generations of Northmen could go back and settle in bigger numbers and enjoy more yummy wine. But they didn't. You know why not? Let's go 400 years forward to find out. Ooh, it's a lot colder now. The medieval warm period has come to an end. The world is getting colder. We are now in the period called the Little Ice Age. The Little Ice Age has done what no human can do. It has beaten back the Vikings. Colder weather makes travel between Europe and America difficult, clogging the route with ice and ice storm. The Little Ice Age has made farming nearly impossible, never mind feeding the cattle. Back in Greenland, the same is true. No settlers managed to survive there past the 1400s, poor weather driving them back to Norway. Much like anyone who dared to live next to Eric the Red, the Viking has come to a nasty end. So Willy, what does this tell us about climate change? It takes a double-headed axe to argue the current warm period is unusually warm or unprecedented. Want to see another Willy graph? Of course you do. 
Here's summer temperatures in Greenland for the past 10,000 years. Here's Earth in the 21st century. Greenland was warmer for almost all the last 10,000 years. And that warmth allows civilization to thrive. If you call the Vikings civilized, ask yourself, what's worse, looking out your window, seeing it warmer or getting cold? Or looking out the window, seeing Eric the Red moving next door? Ooh, what do you think of that? Leave me a comment. Subscribe to Gorilla Science now. And please donate to help buy more coal for my time machine. Every lump means an extra jump.